Back at it in the Superior Sports Talk Show, Luke Emden here with Reggie Wilson, and the 2021 NBA regular season has officially come and gone, and while the Timberwolves exceeded a lot of national expectations by many standards, going 46 and 36, and in doing so, locked themselves into the seventh seed in the Western Conference, and if you talk to the team and fans around the state, their work is not done yet, as they truly believe they can make a serious push in the playoffs. So, the stage is now set to play the eight-seeded Los Angeles Clippers tonight at the Target Center. So, Reggie, your quick thoughts on the 2021 season as a whole and how they match up versus their round one opponent. Well, you know, I I think this is a a great opportunity for them to kind of flex their muscles, to show who they are, Mm. to show that, hey, we have arrived. You know, there have been some times this season where they looked really good. You know, I was at the game uh, a little while back against the Lakers when they just basically just shot them out of the gym. It was pretty embarrassing from, you know, I grew up a Lakers fan after Michael Jordan and the Bulls and all that. And so... (laughs) And so I was just like, good Lord, like you guys are just going to do that. Like there was a lot of trash talk. There was a lot of, you know, a, a lot of just like swagger. And, and they play mm. like a team that is very confident. And it can be a catch-22 sometimes. Sometimes, you know, you can be a little too confident. And maybe that can like bite you in the butt a little bit. But I think it's been them trying to figure out this season, like who they are. What are we mm. about? learning how to be a winning organization because they have struggled to do that over the last decade plus. And so I think, you know, this is this is an opportunity for them to go ahead and beat the Clippers and match up against the Memphis Grizzlies and, and really try to, like, establish themselves. Like, hey, we are here. We are the Timberwolves. This is the new Wolves. This is not the same old Wolves that you just, you know, you come in and you beat up on. We're, we're different this year. And I think that's something that is exciting to watch starting tonight. Yeah, no doubt. You talk about the unique fingerprint and identity that this team, this, or this coaching staff now has. Mm-hmm. It wasn't long ago. Let's flash back to just 2018. We're talking about guys like Jimmy Butler, Covington, mm-hmm. Andrew Wiggins, of course. Of course, Carl mm-hmm. Anthony Towns was the focal point, the young buck, blue chip, bright centerpiece to build around. But w- what, do you, what do you think makes this team different from what we saw in 2018, a team that had a lot of high hopes just like this one to not only make the playoffs but make a serious playoff push? All right, so I wasn't here in 2018, right? But Right, right, yep. I've talked to people since I've been here, and mm-hmm. you know, I read from afar back then And I think one of the biggest things this season that's different from 2018 is they actually like each other. A concept, right? You know, they seem to be a little bit more cohesive. You know, the mm-hmm. whole thing about Jimmy Butler getting the 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 scout team together and, and running the starters off the court and all that stuff. Like, I don't know that Jimmy Butler's way of leadership was very good for that team back then. And we saw they didn't go very far. And, and most of those players that were on that team are now not on the team anymore, and they kind of remade themselves. I think this team kind of goes as Cat goes, and Cat himself has kind of remade him, himself as far as, like, who he is as a player, who he is as a person. I mean, you can't go through what he's been through over the last right. few years and not change mm-hmm. as a person. He's matured. He's he's taken more of that leadership role, and guys are, are more inclined to follow him. You know, you got veterans coming in like Patrick Beverly, and he is getting behind Cat. He's like, hey, this is your team. We're going as you lead us. And Cat is taking that on his shoulders and really trying to, you know, do that and be that guy. And they need him to be a consistent presence day in and day out. And I think that's the difference. This team is much younger as well. You mentioned Butler and Covington and all those guys, you know, guys that are, are, you know, back then approaching 30, now 30. You know, this team is much, much, much younger. You know, you're talking about a team led by D'Lo and Cat and Anthony Edwards, who is 20 years old, 20 years old, and he's balling Why? out of control. It's it's crazy. This team has an <laughs> has a ceiling like you wouldn't believe if they go ahead and put it together, unlike the the teams of the past with Cat and Wiggins and Levine. I think 
this team is 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 special in a way, and we just want to see them reach their potential. I, I'm so glad you brought up Cat's role and impact and, and maturity too, and 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 I want to ask you how it relates back to Coach Finch because the front office mm. extended Coach Finch and the coaching staff, and, yep. and just what that, that means for the future of this franchise and the direction it's headed after what you've been able to see what Coach Finch has done with this young core roster of talent that you just talked about. Now, look, I know that they had a great relationship. The players, I should say, Cat. They had a great relationship with, we'll call him Lil Flip, the the younger. Lil Flip, yeah, yeah Lil Flip, the, the the younger Sanders, um, Saunders. I'm sorry. Uh, I think the difference is Chris Finch has instilled and installed a way of playing that the players seem to really buy into, mm. and also, as opposed to you know Lil Flip, they they are actually winning these games. Like he has he has installed a way of playing that. You know, they can use to actually win games this year. And we've seen them go on five, six game winning streaks this year. And it's interesting because, you know, it was kind of weird how Finch kind of came in, you know, just like, Mm. hey, he's our coach now. He's going to be our coach moving forward. And it wasn't like at the end of the season. It was kind of during the season. And and that's a weird situation. But he has come in and stabilized this group, the unit, and the team. The front office has been committed to putting guys around him, getting guys like D'Lo, drafting a guy like Anthony Edwards, you know, putting guys around him, uh, Patrick Beverly, to really, like, maximize – the talent around Cat as Cat is the centerpiece. And Cat talked about it last week. He and Finch are like actually friends outside of everything else. They talk to each other. They can nearly finish each other's sentences. Like they, he said that sometimes they call and talk to each other and they talk for hours. And a lot of times maybe it's not even about hoops. It's just about life. And when you have a, a team, a star player in sync with his head coach like that, Good results tend to follow. He's motivated. Finch is motivated. And they just seem to to mesh really well. And it's it's turned into a, a great season for the Wolves, which is awesome to see, especially from a fan perspective. Yeah, no doubt. A lot of great talking points right there. You talked over 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time tip-off at the Target Center. Game one, you're going to be there. Let's talk about yeah. this uh, a matchup against the Clippers. You know, uh, the Clippers aren't used to being this low in the West Standings. And, and quite frankly, I don't think a lot of people expected them to even be in the mix when they lost Kawhi Leonard uh, with the torn ACL. Uh, there was the Paul George injury that forced him to miss three to four months, and yet they still manage a way to clinch this eight seed. So, um, uh, just a knee-jerk reaction when you look at these rosters side by side. How do you think the T Wolves match up with the Clippers tonight? You know what's interesting is talent-wise, I think the Timberwolves blow these guys out of the water. Mm. But, but, all right. Let me preface by saying, Ty Lu. I don't think gets enough credit as one of the best coaches in the league. Anytime you are without Kawhi Leonard all season, you are without Paul George, like you said, for three to four months. Like, the dude probably needs Tommy John surgery. He's going to play tonight, and he's been playing, but he has a torn UCL in his shooting elbow. Like, Mm. how is he even playing through that? But with Ty Lue being able to lead these guys to wins without two of the very biggest stars on his team says so much about what he can do as a coach. And we saw it last year when they had Kawhi, when they had PG. Well, they had Kawhi for a little bit of the time in the playoffs. He was able to coach these guys all the way through to to almost beating Phoenix to be able to get to the finals. Like, this dude can coach. And I think if there's anything to worry about tonight, it is that that he's going to have these guys ready to go. And they are going to play up to the level of competition that they have. You know, guys like Reggie Jackson, Luke Kennard. You know, these guys can play ball. And Lou has a good way of maximizing 
them as a talent. But it's it's interesting because we've seen what the Timberwolves look like when they are playing to their best capabilities. When mm-hmm. D'Lo is is putting up twenty plus and Cat is putting up twenty thirty plus and and Edwards is just jumping out of the gym and playing to his potential like. It could be a situation where they can win by 10 or 15 if they're playing the game that they can play. But, like I said, with the Clippers being as sound as they are behind Ty Lue, I think it's going to be a matchup that ends up coming down to the wire, which should be very fun for us to watch on a late-night flow. (laughs) Game one tonight at the Target Center. Tip-off, 8.30 Central Standard Time. Rest assured, Reggie's going to be there, and we'll be here tomorrow to break down all the action in what is sure to be an energetic and electric game for the T-Wolves, who host their first playoff game since 2018.